But yeah, with all those layers together, the food forest, the, the high canopy, the, the low tree layer, the shrub layer, the perennial layer, the herb layer, the root layer, the mycelium, uh, you can grow abundance with not much space. So what is a food forest? A food forest is a garden modeled after a forest in nature with all the different layers of plants and trees and understory uh, perennials and ground uh, tubers. Uh, but we put that into a garden with the function of growing food. So we choose food producing and functional plants. If it doesn't produce food for us, it produces food for uh, all the pollinators that share this land with us. We wanted to include some canopy trees, the highest layered trees, and uh, we chose uh, Fuyu persimmon, which will be going towards the middle of the garden. And we also selected citrus trees, which will create a hedge on the, uh, the, the eastern edge of this landscape. Um, and we also selected a dwarf blackjack fig, which will stay within 10 to 15 feet of the ground, even without much pruning. Once you get your, your upper story uh, canopy trees figured out, um, you can fit in smaller trees in the gaps. And so in this landscape, we, um, we chose some genetic dwarf uh, nectarine and peach trees, which won't get too big. They'll get five to six feet off the ground. And so you'll be able to harvest them without a ladder and it'll be a lot easier to maintain. We also have a vine layer, which you can uh, train up trees or you can create uh, build trellises to support um, berry production. So we have in this case a thornless blackberry which can grow up uh, other tree elements or it can be, grow up a trellis. It will also be a potential privacy screen if you'd like a hedge or a, a screen to uh, block certain um, excess sun or uh, create a little um, nook in your garden for shade. After you get your canopy layer, your, um, your small tree layer, your vine layer, there's also a shrub layer. And in this garden, we chose blueberries as a uh, functional food producing uh, shrub layer that will produce fruit even while there's citrus growing right next to it um, and figs on the other side. Once you got your um, your shrub layer, you can also think about your perennial layer, which are smaller plants that um, include a yarrow, which will attract beneficial insects and pollinators to your landscape. Um, we also have uh, salvia, which is extremely drought tolerant, uh, aromatic plant that also attracts um, both hummingbirds and, uh, and native bees. Um, and we also have um, artichoke here, which is uh, what most people are familiar with is the bulbs that you can um, harvest in the summer, um, or you can let them go to bloom and they actually are very beautiful purple flowers that provide a lot of food for bees. Moving closer to the sidewalk where you might want to have smaller plants so they don't sprawl out and create a lot of excess maintenance is a uh, cat mint, which uh, is another pollinator plant and a very aromatic plant. It smells great and you can actually make tea with it. Um, we also have lavender, which is a Mediterranean plant that does really well in our Mediterranean region. It also provides food for bees. You can dry the, the flowers, use it as a medicinal calming um, herb. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some really cool plants we have here. Um, if you have uh, some sun and you have some water and you have some nice good soil, you could grow your own culinary herbs. Uh, here we have some uh, Italian oregano, which makes a nice little carpet. So you could fit it in uh, small areas that are about one to two feet wide. This is another herb called English thyme. It's a really uh, awesome plant for filling in little cracks. So you could actually put this in between flagstone pieces or in the, on the edges of your garden. We also have a uh, culinary sage. Uh, this one particularly good for if you ever like to cook like butternut squash, uh, soup, you can put some of this in there. Um, so, you know, a lot of chicken dishes and other other uh, options for using sage. Um, it also makes beautiful flowers and feeds the bees. Once you got your, your perennial layer, you can also think about your ground covers.
We have this edible Okinawa spinach, which will uh, serve the purpose of not only providing edible spinach throughout the year, but it will also carpet the ground. And instead of having to weed because soil is exposed, you have a, a carpet that's um, preventing sunlight from uh, germinating weed seeds. Beyond that, you can actually plant tubers into the ground. Uh, it's like your root layer. Um, and that's another layer that people often forget. As your garden is slowly growing, filling in, you still have gaps here and there. You could plant carrots, you can plant radishes and beets. About 14 inches away, right here. Put it in the bucket, keeps them up. I wanna say one thing about a tree guild. A tree guild is a collection of plants uh, based around a, uh, a single tree that all acts as a mini ecosystem and uh, each plant provides a function or it just provides added benefit uh, given the available space. So in this case, we have a nectarine tree. Uh, it won't, this was a, a, a dwarf fruit tree, it won't grow very big, but we do have space around it to grow supporting plants like comfrey, a particular type of plant called a bioaccumulator that has deep roots, that produces a lot of leaf material. And the whole idea of a bioaccumulator is that it, it mines the soil for nutrients that other plants can't actually access and pumps it into the surface, into the leaves. And so through a process of chop and drop, which is literally harvesting the leaves from time to time and spreading them around other plants, you're taking the nutrients that the comfrey or bioaccumulator plant uh, access from its deep roots and you're placing it as a nice mulch to provide nutrients to the other plants which may not have access to those nutrients. Um, in turn the nectarine tree will provide a little shade for uh, other plants you can fill in here later on once the tree is mature. Uh, you can put bulbs and other flowers, you can grow herbs, um, but over time your tree guild may shift as each plant grows and matures, um, but the idea is that you are uh, putting plants in relation to each other rather than just isolating them and thinking of them as separate because they all they all work together if you put them in the right place together. Don't forget to enjoy all your hard work.